Hi, welcome to chapter 23 of Stella Diaz Never Gives Up. Make sure that you are taking notes and that you're paying attention. Um, we will be talking about this tomorrow in class, and you want to make sure that you are prepared. Chapter 23. Once we have an approval from Jenny's dance teacher to hold our bake sale at the recital, the Sea Musketeers go to work. Each person in the group is responsible for bringing at least one item for the table. Jenny's already decided on Vietnamese donuts, and Stanley's bringing limeade. Stanley says you can't find a good limeade outside of Texas, and that his limeade is going to blow everyone's mind. Even Linda signs up to help. She's inspired by our tote bags and agrees to make a few, but out of yarn. While Mom and I plan on making some more tote bags... Mom has the an idea to include a free instructional guide at the bake sale on how to make your own easy tote bag. That way, if people don't want to buy the bag, they still can learn to make their own. I even asked Dad for money when he finally calls to thank me for his president from Mexico. After I tell him about the tasty chapunlis, those are the crickets, right? I tell him about my crusade. I asked Dad to stop using plastic straws and bags. He responds, I'll try. I'm a little skeptical, but he could surprise me. When I go to the next Sea Musketeers meeting, I discover Marielle does not live that far from me. She lives a little bit closer to downtown Chicago than I do. And since our meeting on a Saturday, my mom drops me off. I can hear the salsa music at the front door of Marielle's house. I knock cautiously. My first knock is so soft that mom has to knock again. An old woman answers the door. She's wearing a giant shawl around her shoulders. Um, Quinez? I'm Stella. The old woman does not respond. Me amo Stella, I repeat this time in Spanish. She looks confused. Mom steps in. Buenos dias, senora. Estamos bu buscando a Mariel. Si, I say, agreeing that we're looking for Mariel. Ah, si, sí, la amiga de Mariel. Mucho gusto. The old woman says, in a way that's easy for me to follow. I'm sort of shocked, though, by what she says. She leans away, um, then she leans away from the door. Mi amorcita es tu amigalita. This old woman calls me Marielle's friend twice. She must be mistaken or not know Marielle's Marielle too well because we're clearly not friends yet. Un momento, abuelita. I hear Marielle saying that she'll only be a moment to her grandmother. Hmm. So in this chapter, we're hearing a whole bunch of Spanish. And I am, listen, I am curious. Do you think speaking two languages is a good thing? We're going to be talking about that. I want you to take the time to think about it. It makes sense. The old woman reminds me of a friendlier version of my own abuela. Por favor, entra, Mariel says, welcoming us inside. Mom turns to me. Do you want me to wait with you? I'm okay. I understand her, I reply. Mom kisses me on the top of my forehead and leaves. Mariel's grandma tells me in Spanish to sit on the couch with, and that Mariel will soon be there. While I wait, I study Mariel's plant house. It's brightly colored in oranges and pinks. It looks almost tropical with all the wicker and plants. I can even see a parrot cage. A parrot, the color of a mango in a cage. Mariel enters the living room. Good, you're on time. I'm always on time, I think. Hmm. Do you think Stella right now is being open to being a friend? Hmm. I instantly reply, is that your abuela? Yes, she moved in with us this year from Puerto Rico. She's getting older, and with the hurricane, my parents decided that she should move in with us. Wow, I reply. Marielle nods. It's nice to have her here. We just moved to Chicago, and she's like having a piece of home here. I didn't know you were new here, I replied. My dad got a new job. But I really don't like it here. I miss all my friends in Florida. And 
I had a bunch of friends I could speak Spanish with, and I also miss the ocean. Mario slumps a little forward. Suddenly, I understand her a little bit better. She isn't upset with me the first day because I didn't speak Spanish. She was just disappointed that I wasn't exactly like one of her old friends back in Miami. Maybe I should be worried less about whether or not I fit in with other Latinos or not. Well, I don't speak perfect Spanish, but I'll be your friend. Maybe you can help me get better speaking Espanol, too. Mariel's eyes sparkle a little bit. Hmm, how does it feel to Mariel to have someone else speak Spanish? Let's think about that. My Mexico trip was the first time I ever swam in the ocean. I already miss it. I understand why you miss it so much. Yeah, I could see all those tropical fishes, especially when we went to Key West. Amazing, I reply. Before the rest of the kids show up, Marielle shows me some pictures she's taken of fishes underwater. I spy a blue tang and a banded blue butterfish. There are even pictures of spiny lobsters. Spiny lobsters are different than regular lobsters because they don't have claws. Instead, they have two huge armor-plated antennae. Those are like the, the, you know, like the antlers that stick up top. Her shark, um, her shark pictures probably scare me the most, but it does remind me of a conversation starter I wrote down. Did you know that sharks and dolphins are lighter on the bottom and darker on the top so they can camouflage that themselves in the water? I didn't know that. Tell me more, says Marielle. Secretly, I squeal. That was one of my conversation starters I plan to use at school, but this seems like the best time to start a conversation. When you're at the top of the water, looking down, things look dark. And when you're swimming underwater, things look lighter because you're looking up at the sun. Wow, I never realized that you're right. I smile. I finally started having a real conversation with Marielle. When the rest of the sea musketeers show up, we'll spend the afternoon making a giant banner and list everything we need. We'll need pens. I'll bring those, Christian says. And I can bring plastic plates and plastic cups, says Jenny. No. Logan shakes his head. That create just creates more plastic waste. Jenny looks embarrassed. I quickly say, it's okay. Could you bring some paper napkins instead? She nods her head. Let's try to keep all of the treats handheld and display them on a reusable tray. That way we're not wasteful. Um, Stanley pouts a little. I guess I'll bring more m M&M cookies um, instead of limeade. Maybe you could make limeade for us, I said, and we'll bring this reusable cups. Logan replies, good idea, and I'll wash them, too. Let's try to keep spirits high, Mary also says, smiling. Then Kristen shows us the vlog with our pledge again, and we all approve. As everyone works on banners and posters, I came up with a new realization. I'm almost glad that saving the oceans is something that I can't do alone. While I wish I could fix the oceans with the snap of my fingers... Working with other people and making new friends is pretty fun. That's the end of our reading today. Be ready to talk about it tomorrow. Specifically, start to think, is it a good thing to be able to speak more than two languages? How do you think Mario's life is different because she can speak two languages? And how is it, what is it like, as many of you do, like many of you guys speak two languages. What's it like? I will see you tomorrow. Have a great afternoon.